So let me take you through the very basics of getting started using Figma. Now, first of all, this is Figma. You can use this for absolutely zero cost for free for up to three different projects with unlimited personal files and so much more. So all you're gonna to need to do is go ahead, if you haven't already, sign up for that free account. Once you've done that, you are pretty much good to go. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and grab ourselves a starter file. Now, you could start from scratch and when you get more confident and understand Figma better, that's exactly what you'll do. When you're learning things, it does make life considerably easier if you have something to reference to start off with, just so you can start to understand the fundamental tools that you're going to be using day in, day out. So that's what this video is going to cover. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and find a simple starting point that we can use as the basis. Now there are an abundance of free Figma templates out there, you can use the community, you can just do a general search for free Figma templates, which is exactly what I've done. So this is a website that does just that, gives us free Figma templates. Let's go and find something we like. Let's go to the website section, and we can kind of just scroll through here until we find something we kind of like the look of. I've already gone ahead and searched through to find something, and. In this example, we're gonna be using the Bootstrap Website Design Maker. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna use the same file. All we need to do is click to open this up. It'll give us some information about this particular file. And then all we need to do is click on Get Figma File. When we do that, that will automatically take us over into Figma and open up the file for us. So you can see, this is a Figma file. If we look on the left-hand side, you can see we've got the cover, which we're looking at at the moment. We've got any of the files that are associated with it. In this example, we've got a page maker, so you can grab various different parts. And we've got some examples that we can take a look at how they've built everything together. So all we need to do now is go ahead and make this something we can work with, because at the moment, as you can see at the top, this is view only. So we can look at this inside Figma, but we can't actually select and make changes and save those. We need to go ahead and actually copy this over to Figma itself. To do that is super, super easy. We're gonna come up to the name, we're gonna click on the little drop down Chevron, and we're gonna say duplicate to your drafts. So as long as you're logged into Figma, this will duplicate this over to your account. So we'll click on that, done. What we need to do now is click on the F in the top left hand corner and go back to files. And inside there you can see there's our bootstrap landing page copy. From here though, all we're gonna do is double click to open it up. There we go, an exact duplicate. If we wanna rename this, we can simply go to the top, double click and we can just say my copy for example, and we'll hit return and that's now in our drafts. If we look on the left hand side, we've got exactly the same thing. We've got our page maker, we've got our examples, and we can click to go down into any of these. Now to keep this relatively simple and straightforward, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these designs and use that as our starting point. To do that, I'm simply gonna highlight this entire section and we're gonna just do Control or Command C to copy that. And then we're gonna come over to the left hand side and where it says pages, we've got the plus. We're gonna click on there and we're just gonna call this my design. You can call this whatever you want. And the nice thing with Figma is you can create as many pages inside your file as you need to. We'll hit enter or return to confirm that. And we now have a blank artboard to start working from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a command or control V to paste that initial design into our artboard. And we've now got a copy of that ready. If I wanna move this around, I can simply come up to where it says in this example, sample two, and I can click and I can just drag that down to wherever I want inside my layout. Now, all these elements are totally selectable. If we come over to the left-hand side, underneath where we've got pages, we now have our artboard. If we expand this out, this sample page two is exactly what you can see here. And if you're used to working with something like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, you'll be accustomed to the whole concept of layers. And that's basically what's happening inside here. Each of these different items or groups of items are layers or groups of layers that stack on top of each other to create the overall design. So once you understand that concept, looking at this section is gonna be very familiar to you. Okay, so with that being said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start to create our own version of this. So to do that, we're gonna create a frame. And a frame is basically our web page or our mobile screen, whatever we're kind of creating. And you can create as many of these as you need to or want to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click F on the keyboard or we can come up to the frame tool in the top toolbar on the left-hand side and that will do the same thing. So if I click F, 
That now enables it, and we can, if we want to, come over and drag out a size and then let go. You can see it tells us what size this is going to be. We can click let go, and that's created a frame of that size and dimension for us. If we want to be very specific about this, we can make sure it's selected, and over on the right-hand side, under our design panel, you can see we've got the X and Y position, and also the size for the width and height, and any rotations and things like that. So if you wanted to make this wider or smaller, we can simply come in and say, let's just say, for example, we want to make this 2000. We can just type that value in, hit return, and that's now 2000 pixels wide. You can also interact with this directly inside your artboard. So if you want to make this bigger or smaller, you can simply come over to any of these lines and we can resize as we need to. So that's pretty cool. But what if you want to create a very specific size and you don't want to go through the time and effort of doing all that? Let's delete this. Let's make sure we've got the frame tool selected again, so click F on the keyboard. And if you take a look on the right-hand side, you can see this gives us a lot of predefined layout sizes, things like phones, tablets, desktop presentation, and so on. For this example, let's open up the desktop option. And inside there, you can see it gives us a selection of different sizes. These are starting points. You can resize, as I've just shown you, if you need to. But for this example, we're going to say we want to create a desktop. So we're going to click on desktop, which is 1440 wide and 1024 high. We can just click and drag this into position. And once we've done that, we want to make this a little longer. We'll just drag this further down. And you can do this at any time. So now that we have our frame set up, let's zoom in and start taking a look at the various different components we're going to use. So... Zooming in, putting these side by side. Let's select our first left-hand side, the original design. Let's turn off that layout grid. I'm going to show you how you can create your own layout grid in a moment. But for now, let's just disable that so we can see exactly what's going on. So we've got at the top, we've got our navigation logo on the left-hand side, some text links on the right-hand side. So let's recreate that first. So first of all, this little icon that's being used as the logo. We don't have a copy of that, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. I'm going to do Control or Command C to copy that, select my desktop, and I'm going to do Control or Command V to paste it. And that's going to paste that into our layout. So we've just copied something and pasted it from one frame to another. So you can do that incredibly easily. If you want to duplicate anything inside here, you can do a control command V, or if you want to, you can hold the option or the alt key down and you can just click drag and you'll create as many duplicates as you want each time you let go of the mouse and click drag. Very, very simple. Same kind of thing as you see in most applications. Let's delete that from there. So the next thing we need to do is put in some text for the logo, talk business. So let's just zoom into our design. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply go ahead and put some basic text in. To do that, again, we can come up to the top bar and click on the Type tool, or we can click T on the keyboard, and that will activate it. Now we can just click anywhere on our frame, and that will now enable the text tool for us to actually start typing things in. So let's type in Talk Business. And that just puts text into a frame, again, like you've probably seen in Illustrator, Photoshop, any of those kinds of tools. Now, you'll take a look on the right-hand side, and now our design panel gives us a different set of options. This is what's called context-sensitive. In other words, when you choose different kinds of tools, whether that's a frame, type tool, anything like that, a lot of the options on the right-hand panel will change according to what tool or object you have selected at that time. So with that being done, we now have a lot of text or type options. So we can change the actual text style itself. We can go through bold. We can select sizes, spacing, alignment, all the things you would expect to see. So for ease in this use case, let's just double click to check out what font is being used on this particular logo. So once I highlight that and select it, come over, we can see we're using Inter. It's bold, the size of it, the spacing, and any kind of things like that. So we've got that information ready for us. So let's go ahead and use that. Let's select our type. Bold enter is perfectly fine. So you can see what's happened is it's picked up the actual style from that selected text. But if it didn't, you could easily change that inside here and you can either go ahead, type the values directly in. So for example, we could say we wanted 50 inside there. You can see that now changes it. And if you want to, you can also come over and you can use the simple scrubber option. You can see it changes to this two headed arrow. We click drag and we can scrub to the left, right, up or down, depending upon the type of tool that we have. Let's undo that set it back to what it was. So now let's go ahead and position this where we want to. And you'll see we get a lot of interactive elements that show us alignment position, making sure we align items with other items close to it. We can see what spacing is being provided and so on. So it's a very nice, clean, interactive way of seeing exactly what you're doing, making sure your spacing and things like that is consistent. So once we've done that, let's just zoom in. 
We'll tweak this to make sure it's exactly as I want. And we need to make sure that this first word, this talk, is actually a purple color. So to do that, we can simply double click. We'll select talk by clicking and highlighting. And now we can do is we can come over to the fill color on the right hand side and we can click on the little color chip. This now gives us a standard color picker. So we can use any of the options to select the color we want inside here. We can choose between solid, linear, and so on for various different kind of color options. And we have a ton of different things we can do inside you. You can also come in and choose things like hexadecimal values, RGB, CSS, HSL, and so on. For this, we're going to stick to the hex values. And if you want to select it from directly inside you, you can do that. Or if you want to, we can actually use the eyedropper. Click on that to enable it. Then we can come over and select anything inside our design. Click on that, and you can see that now picks up the purple color. One of the nice things about working with Figma is when you add a color into your color palette and use it, it'll automatically add that into the color chips you can see underneath the document colors. So it's a nice, easy way of always being able to reference those should you need to at any point moving forward. Let's close that down. We finished now with our logo. That's basically all done for us. The next thing we're going to do is we want to recreate the menu structure. So if we again, we take a look, we've got home, about, and so on, and we have this sort of call to action button. Let's go ahead and create these first four first, and then we'll create the button last. So let's go ahead and select the type tool, press T on the keyboard one more time. We'll click roughly inside our layout, and we're going to type in the word home. And what this does is this is retaining the same text styling as the last style we set up. And that's perfectly fine in a lot of instances, but in this example, we need to change it. To do that, again, we're going to come over to the right-hand side. Enter and bold is all perfectly fine, but we're going to change the text size. We're going to set this to be, in this example, 16 pixels. We'll hit return. Once we've done that, you can see that's now set our text size exactly as we need it to be. And again, you see we get these interactive guides showing us position and so on. Let's adjust the position of that until we get it centered roughly with the actual logo itself. And you can see that now aligns up nicely. And we're going to do the same trick again. We're going to hold the Alt or Option key down. We're going to duplicate this three times. And again, you can see this is kind of automatically positioning things. And that's great. It just makes the whole process really quick and easy. And now we can just come in and we can change the text inside each one of these. And as you can see, even though we'd aligned everything nicely, but we duplicated, because the text has actually changed size, there's more characters inside here, our alignment's all a little bit messed up. But don't worry, all we need to do is drag over these four different items. And what we can do is we can use the option then at the top to go ahead and align everything and we can say tidy up, click on that, and that will automatically set the spacing. But as we can see, the spacing is a little different to what we have when it comes to the actual original file. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Let's move these over a little bit further. I'm just going to roughly position them, and then we'll do the same again. So we'll grab these, and we'll just come over, and we'll say tidy up just to tweak and make sure everything is perfectly aligned. So that's the first four links. Let's go ahead now and create that button, that call to action button. To do this, we're going to select the systems. We're going to do the option drag option again, just to move that over. We'll double click inside there. Don't worry if the alignment gets messed up. We can adjust that very quickly, like we've just seen. We're going to double click to select everything, come over to our fill color, and you can see there's our purple colors. So we can choose the purple color we want to use. That's the lighter version in this example, and we've now created our link. So we need to go ahead now and create that button kind of effect around it. To do that, we can come over and we can use the option for the shape tools. If we click to open the shape tools up, you can see we've got rectangles, lines, ellipses, all manner of different things. So we can press the R on the keyboard or choose rectangle. So let's choose the rectangle option. And let's go ahead and just drag out a box around this to the rough size and shape that we need. We'll let go. Now, obviously, we have a couple of problems. This has a background color and no stroke. So let's go ahead and address the background color first. We'll come over to our fill. We'll click on that color chip. And we're simply going to go ahead and set our opacity to 0. So this is totally transparent. Now we're going to come over. We're going to add a stroke. So all we need to do where it says stroke is click the plus. We can click the color chip and choose the same purple color. And you see that now puts a stroke around it. Let's go and change that to be 2 pixels. So it's a little bit more strength to it. And now we're going to come over and we're going to set the border on this to make it more pill shaped. Let's close our colors down. So if we come back up to where we saw, we can set the position, the size of any of our frames, any of our different elements. We've also got the option for rounded corners. So in this example, let's just go and set this to a high value like 100 and press return. That now creates our kind of pill shape. Now you also notice that sometimes you may not want to actually do all four corners. So let's undo that. 
If we click on this icon, this will allow us to have independent corners. So we click, you can see this now gives us the four independent corners, your bottom right, left, so on. So what you need to do is set the values inside there that you want. For this example though, we want all to be exactly the same. So again, let's come back in and set that to 100. There we go. And now we can just make sure everything is aligned perfectly. So we're going to select both the text and the outline for our button. So we'll drag over the both of those and we can come up then to our options in the top right hand corner and we can say we want to align vertical center and horizontal center and everything is perfectly aligned. And now we can use this to make sure everything is positioned perfectly. And if we want to, we can kind of grab over all of these. But before we do that, I want to show you one other thing to do. If we start to set things up like aligning like this, and we come over and we choose tidy up, you can see what happens is because we've got this box or this rectangle and we've got text inside it, it kind of throws everything out and we don't want that to happen. So let's undo that, control or command Z. Let's now select our button one more time with the text and the frame outside it or the rectangle outside it. When we've got that, we're going to do command or control G. That will now group those together. So if we come over to the left hand side in our layers panel, you can see we have group 21, which means nothing. So let's double click on that and let's just say CTA button. Now that means something. Hit enter or return. And if we expand this out, you can see rectangle 57 and contact us. If you want to name these kinds of things, you can do, but it can kind of get a bit silly if you need to. Okay, so now what we can do is we can grab all of these together and that button will be treated as one whole element and not two different component pieces. So with that selected, we can come over and we can choose our option to tidy up. And now everything works as we expect it to. So we've created our header section. Now, before we go any further, we need to make sure that everything is going to be aligned together. And this can be a little bit problematic unless we use a grid system. So to do that, all we need to do is select in this example, desktop one, which is the frame we created. And again, if you want to rename this, you can do that by just double clicking where it says desktop one at the top. And we'll just call this my design hit return and you see that updates now in the layers panel and makes a little bit more sense. So what we're going to do is with that selected, we're going to come over to where it says layout grid and we're going to click the plus to add one in. And you can see what happens is it puts exactly where it's suggesting a layout grid. So we don't want it to be this way. We want it to be just simple columns to do that. Let's click on this little sort of Rubik's cube symbol and we've got some options inside here. At the moment, this is set to the default grid, click the arrow and choose columns. And now that gives us some columns. So what we can do is we can set this in this example to be 12 columns, which is a very typical layout that you use when it comes to designing desktop applications. You can see underneath we've got stretch as the option, but we're going to leave that as it is. But we're going to come over to margins and we're going to set a 100 pixel margin. This is going to be 100 pixels either side, giving us a desktop value of about 1240 pixels. But you set whatever value works for you for the layout you're creating. Hit return and you can see that now gives us our grid. We'll close that down and all we need to do is go into these various different pieces and adjust things. So we're going to grab our navigation and we're simply going to push this over to the left hand side until we get the edge of our button flush against the outside edge. We do the same thing now for our logo and we're going to, just going to drag that over until that butts up to the left hand edge. And while we're at it, let's do control or command G to group our logo together and let's come into group 21 and change this to logo. Hit enter or return and we've now grouped that together. If you want to reposition any of these, you can simply drag this up and down and you can see that repositions everything. You can also grab all of these options together, all these various different layers. And because this is our navigation, let's group that together as well. So control or command G. I'm going to change group 21 to navigation section. Doing it at this stage just makes the whole process so much easier because you know exactly what's what, you can enable, disable things, you can lock things in place and do so many other things. So we don't want this to accidentally move around. So let's go ahead, come over that, and we're going to click the little padlock icon, and that will then lock that down. And we now can't move that. We can't select it to do anything with it because it's locked. If we want to move it or change anything, we just need to unlock it. And now everything becomes selectable one more time. So let's go ahead, lock that down. Simple as that. If you want to turn it off, if you've got a busy design, you can simply use the eye icon and that will then hide it from your screen. Click at the eye icon one more time. We'll show it again. Okay, pretty cool. Now let's just say we finished with this grid. So we take a look over at our original options. You can see this is all centered. So we don't really need a grid to do this at this point. So we'll select the my design frame and we're going to come back over to our layout grid. And we're not going to click the minus because that will delete it. All we're going to do is click on the little eye symbol 
and that will just hide it from sight. So it's still there. We can turn it back on at any point just by clicking on that. So with that turned off, let's go ahead now and grab and work with a second section. So become a better business with us. So again, press T on the keyboard. That puts us into the type tool. We're going to click anywhere inside our design, making sure that enter and bold is set up on there. We'll start off with an arbitrary value. Let's try something like 36. When it comes to the size, we'll hit enter or return, and we'll just go ahead and type things in. Okay, so there's our text all on one line, which obviously is not what we want. And it's also at the point in time, just a little bit small. So let's go ahead and just double click and let's make that a bit bigger. Let's use that scrubber option so we can easily come in and start changing the size of this. So I can visually adjust this until it looks close to what I want. That looks pretty good. And I also think we need to tighten up the letter spacing. So let's just click inside there. Let's reduce this down. Maybe about minus one looks pretty good. You also see though that we have a problem. This is all on one line and we want it to be on two. So we could put a hard return if we wanted. So we could click after better and we could hit return, but that's not really the best way of doing it. So let's undo that. You see, we've got this blue frame around our actual text. If we click outside that, you can see we get the resize handles. And now what we can do is we can simply drag this down, shrink it up a little bit until we get roughly what we want. And then we can drag this over. And again, you see, we see those handles. When we get to the center, it automatically puts in a snap line so we can see exactly where this is going. And we'll roughly position it where we want. Now, if we select all of this, the line height is being set, but what we can do is we can click inside there and we can set this to a value or we can type in auto and this will automatically set a spacing value for us. So you've got plenty of options. We can adjust the alignment if we want to. So left aligned, center aligned, right aligned and so on. So there's our text. We've got the spacing and everything set out exactly as we want to. So with that said, let's go ahead and just shrink this box down. We don't need this to be quite this big. And there we go. Now, how far away does this need to be if we're duplicating this particular section? At this point in time, I have no idea. If I click on this, you can see it shows me this little line above, but I don't really know what is going on there. However, if we hold the Option or Alt key down, you can see that shows us spacing lines. It'll give us the values that we've got above, below, and to the left and the right-hand side. So you can see we've got 217 pixels from the top. If we click on ours and we do the same thing again, so hold that option or alt, you can see we're a little bit further away. We are 287 pixels. So all we need to do is start to move that up. We can use the arrow keys, which will move us one pixel, or we can hold the shift key down at the same time, and that will move us 10 pixels at a time. So you can see it's a much quicker way of being able to very quickly and easily see exactly what you need to be doing. So now we've got our text positioned exactly as we need it to be. We're done. So the next thing I'm going to do is now go ahead and duplicate this kind of little second level call to action information. Now for ease, I'm simply going to double click inside here and copy the text. So we'll do Control or Command C, and we're going to come back over to our design. So let's click T on the keyboard to open up the type tool, and we're going to just draw it a rough box as a rough starting point. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can just paste that little bit of text in. So Control or Command V, and that puts the text in. And then if you want to change the size or styling or anything on this, you can go ahead using exactly the same techniques I've just shown you with the Become a Better Business above. So let's go ahead and just resize this text box. I'm going to come over and we're going to just make sure our spacing is perfectly fine. So we're going to select this. We're going to hold that Option key down. And you see we are 339 from the top, or if we hover over this become a better business with us, you can see that tells us there's 16 pixels between the two. So you can use whichever option you want. For ours, I'm gonna go ahead and select the 393 from the top. So we're gonna come back over, select this, hold that option or alt, and then we're gonna use the shift key to take us up a little bit quicker. And then we're gonna just fine tune it without the shift key. So now we know we've got that text in perfectly. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is create this button. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things. You might be thinking, well, this is exactly the same as what we've just done with the Contact Us button. And you'd be pretty much right. But I'm going to show you one thing that just makes the whole process of using reusable components way, way easier, plus a couple of other things included. So we've got this purple button that's pill-shaped with our business and a purple drop shadow. Let's go ahead and create it. So like we've seen before, we can just choose the R for the rectangle tool to create our starting point for our button. So we'll just drag this out roughly. I'm not going to worry too much about it. We'll roughly position this in the center. We'll worry about specific spacing in a moment. We'll come over to our fill color. And we're going to choose our purple from there. And we're going to come back up to our rounded corners. We're going to do the same again. So 100 in there just to give us our nice pill shape. And that's our basic button set, set up. 
Next up, let's do the TO type tool. We'll click roughly inside there and we'll just put in our business. Let's zoom in. Let's select our text and let's make this a little heavier. To do that, let's come over where it says regular and we're going to go to bold on there. That looks pretty good. And we're just going to roughly position this. And you'll see again, what happens is it will kind of snap into position. But if it doesn't, or you want a quick way to do it, you can just kind of group select the both of these and then you come out to do your horizontal and your vertical alignment and that will align things for you. Okay, so we've now created the basics of our button. Final thing we need to do is add that drop shadow in. So let's select our button shape. We're gonna come over like we did with the stroke effect. This time we're gonna to come to effects and we're gonna click on the plus and drop shadow is the default, but you can click this and choose other options if you want to. With that being said, let's go ahead and click on the little sort of star. We'll click on there and now we can set up the values for the shadow color, the distance, the blur, the spread and so on. So this is using the same kind of purple color. So we're gonna select our color chip Choose purple from there, adjust the opacity on this to make it a little bit more subtle, around about 45%, somewhere in there. And if you want to adjust the blur, you can do that. So we can say 10 for the blur, for example, and we might say we want the offset to be 10 or something. So you can see that shows us what it's going to look like. We can click outside and there's our basic button. Let's actually make that just a little bit smaller. Let's make that six. There we go. Okay, so we've now created our button and we've set up the basics for it. I want to show you a couple of things now. We want to make this something that can not only be resizable, but also be reusable. To do that, we're going to use two features. We're going to just select our button. So we're going to drag over this and we're going to come over to the right hand panel one more time. And inside there, you can see we have auto layer. If we click plus on auto layer, this now allows us to do a couple of things. It allows us to set up spacing to the left and the right top and bottom. It allows us to choose where and how things will stretch if more content or less content is added, if there are hard returns and things like that. So what we can do is we can use these options. If you ever come from something like Flexbox, this is going to feel quite familiar. You've got this little Rubik's Cube that says, where do you want your content to be aligned? We're going to set this to be the center alignment because we, it's our text inside our button and so on. You can see, do we want this to sort of flow horizontally or vertically? We can just choose whichever one works for us. We're going to set this to be horizontal for this example. You see, we've got then the option for things like the space between items. We have multiple items inside there, your horizontal padding and your vertical padding. And again, we've got the options to expand this out if we want to control each the top, bottom, left and right independently of each other. We link those back together though, that's perfectly fine. We're gonna set our left and right, we're gonna set this to be, instead of 96, we're gonna say, let's go for something like 60. And you see that now adjusts accordingly. Top and bottom, we're gonna set this, and we'll say 16 for the top and bottom. So we've now specifically set up the sizing for our button element. So now we've set up an auto layout. So that's pretty cool. So let's just duplicate this a second. So again, option drags, we'll make sure we've got this all selected. Option drag this. And now let's come in and change this. So we're gonna say our business practices. And you can see now that the spacing is still con retained consistently on the left and the right and the top and the bottom, and it expands based upon the actual content. If we come in and we click and we push practices down to the next line, you can see it's centered, the spacing on the left and the right and the top and bottom is retained consistently. So it's a very quick and easy way of being able to make these components stretchable, scalable, and all those kinds of things. And this works really, really well when we actually create a component. So we're gonna group select this, we're going to command G again. This isn't something you need to do. This is just what I like to do. We're going to rename this and we're going to say this default button. Call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So now when we've done that, we're going to right click and we're going to come down to the option that says create component. You could use the keyboard shortcut or you can use the options at the top of the screen. Create our component and it's now done. You'll notice where it says default button, that now has changed to purple. That says that this is not a purple button. It just tells us that the purple denotes the fact that this is a component. So now instead of us having to duplicate this, what we can do is we can add a component in. So if we come to the top, you can see we've got resources. We can click on there and inside there is our default button. You can also come over to assets in the left hand panel and you can see we can open up my design and there's our default button. So now if I want to add a component in, I can simply drag that off the left hand side and you can see there's our component. We double click on this, I can come in and I can just change the text inside there. 
But you see, that doesn't change the actual parent because this is an entity in its own right, but it's still a quick and easy way of being able to create repeatable components that you can pretty much do anything you want with. If we want to change the color of this, we can select it. We can change the color on there and we can say, let's go for this paler kind of color and we'll change our text color and we'll select that. We'll change our fill for our text and we'll set that to be this dark purple. And there you go, we've kind of created a variation of that. But you see, it hasn't affected the actual component itself. We can drag another instance of that out, drop it in there, and it's back to the exact same thing. So this is a really quick and easy way of being able to create reusable elements that you don't have to go through the process of changing every time. Plus they're scalable, you can edit the content, you can edit anything you want. It's just quick and easy. So components are gonna be a lifesaver when you start to work with this a lot more. Okay, so there's our button in place. Let's make sure our alignment and everything is set up correctly. So again, let's come over to this, hold that option or alt key down. So 496 from the top. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna click on it. And you see we're a little bit far out. So let's just set that to be 496 and there we go. So the final thing we really wanna go ahead and do now is make sure that this is aligned. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna click and we can see we can move this over and once it gets to the center, it clicks in place. Hold the Option or the Alt key down just to check this is in the right position. There we go, perfectly in line. And if we wanted to, we can just select all of these and we can make sure that everything is aligned perfectly together and boom, there's our kind of hero section called Action Done. Next thing we wanna do is create this section for our image. To do that, all we're gonna do is come over, create a new rectangle. So we're gonna do press R on the keyboard. We're gonna roughly drag this out to a rough sort of size and scale. Again, if you want to be very specific about this, say 630, you can just come in, set 630 at the top, and there you go. That's now perfectly sized. So now we've got a kind of placeholder in place. The next thing we're going to do is pull in an image. So for this, let's come over to one of my favorite sites for free stock images, and that's Pexels. And let's just do a search for woman with a laptop. Hit return and you see there's a bunch of pictures. If you want to filter this, we can click on filters and say orientation is horizontal only. And there we go. So I like the look of this one. So I'm going to click to open this up and we're just going to right click and we're going to say copy the image, come back into Figma, making sure this is selected and we're just going to do control or command V and that pastes it directly inside that rectangle we just created. Now you may be thinking the image looks okay in there, but what if it wasn't the position that I want? Can I change it? very easily. We can just click the image, come over to where it says fill image. We can click on there and you can see once you open that up, we can now adjust things like exposure, contrast and so on. But also we can come in to choose how it interacts with the rectangle, the shape that we've used to create. So in this example is set to fill. We could, if we wanted to set that to be fit, so that will fit the image and not take up the full kind of width or height if it doesn't need to. We can come in and say crop and that allows us to crop the image or we can come in to tile and that will kind of repeat it. So if you have a pattern, you want to repeat it, you could use this. In our example though, we want to set this to crop. And you see this now gives us these kind of resize handles, but also it allows us to reposition. So if you want to reposition this, we can just drag it to the position we want. If you want to resize it a little bit, we can adjust the sizing to make sure that we don't lose anything. If you want to adjust rotation, you can do that. If you've got an image that's not quite square or you want to create a kind of funky effect. And then once you're happy, we'll click outside that and there's our image now all set up in place. And again, if we want to, we can just adjust this, we can nudge it around, we can reposition it, we can do what we want. And if you want to, you can also come over to the option with the F in the top corner and click on view. And inside there we can use Shift R or we can use rulers inside here. That'll put a ruler in. And now what we can do is we can just drag from the top or the left ruler and we'll get a little guideline. So we can position this in line with the image on the original, there we go. And now what we can do is we can just simply position, adjust, crop, whatever we need to do on this to make sure everything is perfectly in line. And now if we wanna check everything out, we could simply come up to my design and we'll come back in, switch our grid on to make sure everything is aligned as we want it to be and that everything is in place. And we could carry on doing pretty much what I've just shown you to go ahead and recreate all these other elements if we wanted to. We can very quickly come up select this heading for example, we'll option or alt click and drag this down to get this roughly where we want. We just double click to select it, set it to be left aligned. While we're at it, we'll just make sure this is a little bit smaller. So currently it's a 67, let's make it something like 56. Making sure that it's exactly as we want. You can see that now creates this little subsection. So let's copy that text from there. We'll 
paste it inside. There we go. If we need to adjust the width of this, we can do that. So you can see once you kind of start to find your feet inside Figma, the whole process is very quick and easy. Same thing goes for images and things. You can just duplicate something if you want to. So we can option click drag this. We can just then resize it to get what we want. Don't worry about my picture being a bit squiffed on there. It doesn't really matter too much. It's more a case of, I just want to show you how this all works. So we'll just set that back to be fill, for example. That corrects any proportion problems. And again, let's just tweak the spacing on this. And then you can kind of come in and you can just grab the other text. So we'll just grab this again. Option drag, position where you want. Adjust the size of the box. Double click inside, adjust the size of the text. Let's just say something like the 30. There we go. And you can just carry on doing this until you've got exactly what you want. So once you kind of create the layouts of this, let's just do one more thing. This sort of like May 2021. So let's just do the same again. Let's just option drag click this, double click inside, May 2021. Select our text, change our color, adjust this to be something like 24 pixels. We can adjust the spacing in between the letters like so, just dragging that out and we'll change this from bold to something like semi-bold. And now we've kind of created this layout. We'll select these two elements, make sure they are aligned to the top. And again, these alignment arrows and options kind of make the whole process easy. We can just select all of these then. We could group them if we wanted to. We can just simply drag it down using those kind of position Indicate this to show us exactly that everything is lined up the way we want. Then let's go ahead back to our design, turn off our columns, and we can easily then come in and just start adjusting the spacing on the text and so on. Make sure everything is exactly as we want, change our pictures, change our text, do all those things. So now you've seen how to use a lot of the different tools, a lot of the different features, the keyboard shortcuts, and how to interact with the Figma interface. This should give you enough confidence to be able to start working on your own designs. Whether you want to duplicate something like I've done just to get comfortable where you don't have to think about the design, you are literally just duplicating someone else's work just to kind of get your skills up, or you want to start from scratch. Get stuck in start to play about with it, start to see how quick and easy it is to create designs using a tool like Figma. And hopefully this will speed up your whole design process and it's giving you the confidence to get stuck in and start experimenting. As always, all the links are in the description below. And if you want to see more about UI UX design using a tool like Figma, then check out the link in one of these corners right now. There's going to be a ton of information inside there for you. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.